Nice fish. I expect to get hit right about there. There you go. Just as I called it. Hi guys, I'm Zeno Chromin. I'm a co-founder of Surfcaster Journal magazine at surfcasterjournal.com. I also wrote three books on fishing. This is my series of how I fish stuff. Uh, I had a bunch of videos done on specific lures, on day night bags, a bunch of other ideas that are in my head. I don't necessarily have written anything how I do these videos. I kind of the idea comes to me. I figure I share it with you. Hopefully it'll help one of you. That's all I'm looking for is to help you in some way, shape or form. Uh, you probably might not fish the way I fish or agree or disagree with the way I fish. But if you can find something in this that help you uh, increase your catch, I think I think it's great. Uh, this is actually a different videos where I'm going. I'm not even going to talk about plug specifically, I'm going to talk about um, a way of fishing. I, I know it's very different, but I, I feel like every one of us has a way that they fish, kind of like a method to our madness, okay? So um, I spent years catching fish because there was a lot of fish around. Uh, maybe in some ways I thought of myself of being a good fisherman, uh, I sincerely doubt it. In those days, I, I was kind of green. Doc Muller to me was God. And, uh, you know, I joined a club because of Doc. And I, I never really fully understood what, you know, he was talking about wave formation and bucktails and all that to me. like, ah, you're always fishing bucktails. But I kind of came around to understand what he's saying. So in those days, we caught a lot of fish. Doesn't matter where you went to fish, you caught fish. You didn't have to pay much attention to what you were doing. You cast the lure, you went in the middle of the night, you caught fish, okay? Daytime, nighttime fishing is not the same thing. Nighttime fishing has always been much better. It always will be much better. And uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. So I'm not going to go get into that, obviously. But what I want to get into my, I guess, the theory or methodology or whatever you want to call it, Years ago, I was standing on a rock in Montauk, and I like telling these stories when I do the seminars. I was standing on a rock, and there was a, a spot to the left of me. There was a, a hundred angles, and no one was catching fish. There was a million of fish, but they wouldn't need anything, okay? Flat conditions, which is not normal for the south side of Montauk. And there was fish boiling everywhere, but they just weren't interested in, in eating. They were on small, tiny rate bait. So I'm sta I walked away from the fish. I'm standing on a rock. And I'm basically casting. I raised one fish on a pencil popper like six miles away. And I never saw it afterwards. So I'm just standing on a rock and kind of looking at it, at the water. And uh, the wave comes. And literally, this wave is like maybe like 10 feet ahead of me, in front of me. It breaks on a reef. Like I said, it wasn't very rough. So there wasn't a lot of waves. The, the wave breaks. And all of a sudden, you see all these fins in white water. And... Right away, I'm trying to throw a bucktail, which I have like an ounce and a half, and I'm 11 foot rod. You try to throw three feet uh, in front of you, and you're like, uh, and by the time I got my bucktails already in the ground, and the fish are gone, and the white water's gone, and everything has changed in 10, 15 seconds. So I'm going, oh, all right. I mean, this is, you know, one of those freaky things where the fish just showed up for a second. So I'm, I'm plugging along, catching shit. A few minutes later, another set comes. The wave breaks. Behind it, you got that white milky foam. All of a sudden, you got the fins are cruising around this foam. The, the, I don't see what they're feeding on. And again, I'm trying to make a cast and, and, and I'm too late. So I'm thinking to myself, or right, maybe there's something to this. So I'm waiting with a small metal lip and I'm waiting. And two minutes later, I see a wave. It starts to build up. It starts to build up. And then it crashes. It crests and it crashes. And you see all that white water behind. I take the small metal lip on 11 foot rod, which wasn't very optimal. And I just kind of pitched it into that white water, which was like 10 feet away from me. Because I was on a rock pretty far away from shore. And I pitched it and I literally put the line on a roll and it went, oh, I'm in. And so that day, while the white water was present, only in those casts that white water was present, I caught maybe like 20, 30 fish. Okay. The 
Number of fish I caught with white water wasn't present was zero. I haven't caught a single fish, okay? And I, I will never forget that day. And I went back to Donnie Musa and I said, Donnie, I understand what you're talking about now. Because Donnie would always say, oh, there's plenty of fish here, but they won't eat because there's, there's just not enough white water and they can see your lure and it doesn't mask it. And I'm like, yeah, Donnie, whatever you say. I mean, come on, seriously. If the fish want to eat, they eat. But there's something to it. And actually, there's a lot to it. It changed the whole way I fish. And it made me so much more productive as a fisherman. It made me, it made me 10 times more better fisherman than I was the day before. Okay? It was like a eureka moment. Okay? Now, granted, it took me a while to get to the point of confidence that I have today and understanding of what I, what I think I understand what's going on. Okay? So I'm not going to make this a 20-minute video trying to explain to you, but I will give you my synopsis of why you should do this and why you should pay attention to this, and why should this increase your catch rate, okay? At least when the rough water is, is plentiful. So let's get to it. First of all, obviously we all know that the game fish likes turbulent conditions because they have an advantage over the bait fish. That's a known fact. Regardless if this is a rough tumbling surf or this is a fast current, which a smaller bait fish cannot navigate and a bigger one can. Whatever this might be, this is a known fact. So, you know, you can argue with all you want, but to me, this is really no argument here. So how does white water play into this? Okay, so I'm gonna to try to make this as quick as possible. When you, if you ever seen a, a, a bass feed, okay, and come through the wave, and even if you ever seen a bass come and hit your lure, I will, I can't guarantee you, but I know in my personal experience that 99.9% .9 of the time that bass will hit my popper in general because that is generally the only lure that I have a visual of when I fish daytime, okay? So I got 99.9% .9 of, of my opinion, my popper is going to get hit on the back side of that wave, okay? So if my popper is on the back side of this wave, where the wave is about to crest, down this way and my popper is chugging alongside the back side of it it's going to get hit more times than not i never had a bass come through the wave and hit my plug i did have a jack i did have a rooster i did have all kinds of fish in bluefish but i never had a bass me you might have i don't so i'll give you my experience so this made me kind of look at this situation and this is by, by the way a, a, applicable in a dark too okay so just it's not just a daytime thing, but daytime is a much better visual thing. So what I've started doing is I time the waves when I fish in the daytime, okay? And this goes most of it metal lips. Now, you know that when you throw a metal lip out there, you can only cast it so far, okay? Because they, they, they cast like a wet rag, okay? It doesn't matter how big they are because their weight, their pivot point is in the middle. In order for the metal lip to do this, to swing back and forth, the... The, the balance has to be here, which means it casts like shit, okay? That's just, if you weight it here, the metal lip will stay in the water like this, so that wouldn't work. But obviously, they work great if you can get them out there. Having said that, if you cast the metal lip in front of the wave, what happens? The wave comes, crashes on top of your metal lip, they go swim 15 yards down the beach, there's your metal lip. Wait a minute, if you wanted to cast it there, why well, just didn't cast it there? If you cast it here and the wave took it there, it means that that's probably unintended consequences, okay? That's one thing. The second thing is, when the wave crashes, all that bait that's in that wave and been driven by that force is disoriented for maybe five, 10 seconds, okay? And bass will come in through that foam and they will pick anything disoriented. By the time the wave turns and, and the current start pulling underneath, the bass are already gone. They already gone back and then come in our next wave. My point is your plugs got to be in that white water. So what I do is I'll, with the metal lips, because they don't cast that well, I will wait until, and obviously you have to find the structure where you can reach this with a metal lip. If you can, you're going to use other plug, which I'll get to in a second. So I'll, I'll wait for the wave to come, starts building up, I'll cast my metal lip, and I will have it landed right behind the, the Oftentimes, I can't even see my plug landing behind the wave in that white water. And I started working right away. And nine out of ten times, if the bass are in there, it will be automatic. 
It, they will hit it. They don't ask any questions. They can always spit it out later. So they'll hit it. Whatever's moving in that white water, the bass will hit it. I will guarantee you. If they're hungry, they will hit it. Now, this works well with poppers. If you can't reach that part of the wave or that white water has come towards you, you can throw a popper and then to put it on the backside of that wave, crank it where you need it to be, and then just hold it. Try to have the speed of the wave match your plug. Now, having said that, the wave will always be faster than your plug. So don't try to stay on a single wave all the way in beach. You're not rooster fishing going 1,000 miles an hour. Let the wave go by, slow down your popper, let the next set come, slow down even more, and then bring the popper behind that wave and start popping like crazy into that white water. My point is this. All, you can catch a fish everywhere, in, in, in calm water, deep water, shallow water, you name it. But this is a very, very specially, highly um, productive spot. All I want you to be is cognizant of it. I don't want you to go and fish it only that. What I want you to be is be cognizant of how good that spot can be comparable to most of the other spots. That's my point here in talking about this, okay? How could I apply this to other lures? Well, first of all, most of the plugs that I fish at night, although I can't see my white water, I can feel it. Okay, and, and I, you have to fish for a little bit to know what, what the hell I'm talking about. But if you're, you, you, if you're on a wide open beach, on a sandy beach, and you have some rough water in front of you, some sandbar, and you, you, you're retrieving your needlefish, okay, or daughter, you can feel when that plug is in the white part of the wave because it, will, it won't be just a straight retrieve. You'll feel that little tension because it's actually in a turbulent water. And that is the time that I want you to think, Oh, I should get a hit right now. I should get a hit right now. And a lot of times, you will get hit right there. My point is, you can almost, in a proper setting, in a proper setting, okay? And I have videos that I can show you. In a proper setting, I can tell you, I'm going to get a hit right here. Boom! And, if, and, and I will get hit that instant. Why? Because I know exactly in that wave, where am I going to get hit? This is where I expect the fish to be, right there. And here it is. Come on, fishy. I expect to get hit right about there. There you go. Just as I called it. So, I mean, if this makes any sense to you. So my point is, I expect to get hit every time my lure is in that white water. Obviously, the fishing is not that great. Well, we get to do this all the time. But when it was good, it was, it was almost like automatic. So my point is, when you're casting out there, then don't just cast as far as you want. If you cast your lure the furthest, but always cast in the wrong spot and don't pay attention to the water, you're not going to catch most of the fish. One story to close it out. Years ago, mullet run. Um, we were out at the Nickerson Beach in Point Lookout. This was like 10 years ago. Mullet were coming down the beach. And the bass were on them, but they weren't really aggressive. It was a hard, hard southwest wind. Couldn't really throw plugs that far, right? There was a bar to, the, bar to the left and a little deeper water to the right. And the mullet were coming down the beach. And guys were casting into the mullet poppers. You know, blue, blue poppers, blue pencil poppers, man. They weren't catching shit, okay? I went 100 yards down in this place where literally the sandbar came in the shore on, on a U. It was like a foot of water where that sandbar was. It was all like white water. It was like a wash machine, okay? It didn't look like a place that you wanted to fish because the water was about this deep. So I threw a metal lip. And of all the things, I had a, a surfster type metal lip. If you know surfster has got a cup lip, it sucks in the rough water. It just, it gets tumbled up. It, it really is not a good plug for white water. The, the Z plug or whatever, the Z lip, it's much better. It's much better, which I'm not going to get into now. But I had the surf, so that's the only thing that I had. I took that day, I believe, 48 fish. They took three, between three of them. I, my furthest cast was maybe 10 yards. Why? The mullet was coming down the beach. There was no obstructions. They were just coming down the beach. When the bass would come in, they would come in shore back and forth, okay? They weren't really, the bass wasn't at the advantage. 
But this bar, imagine this being a beach and this being a bar, right? Bar came in a beach. When they had to cross over this bar that touched the beach, they came in a foot of water, of old wild white water. Guess what happened? The bass just ate them up because the bass can navigate through that white water. And the mullet were just thrown about until they were on the other side of the bar if they were lucky to get there. Well, guess what? My metal lip looked just like mullet. Throw it in there, underneath the wind, pitch it 10 yards, crank up, boop. Fish like almost every cast. My point is, be cognizant of white water. White water, current is important. A lot of times it funnels the fish, it funnels the bait, it does million brilliant things. But white water, even without a current, even without anything else, you can use it to your advantage. So pay attention to your cast. See you at the beach.